Hey everybody, Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great week. Look, uh, people have been asking me this question for a while and I've sort of alluded to it, talked about it briefly, addressed it on uh, certain occasions, but I'm going to delve off into this whole Russell Wilson, Sierra uh, future thing and why so many guys seem to hate this guy or refer to him as a mark, a simp, or a square, or goofy or whatever the thing is. And I wanna to touch on it in a way that hopefully brings some illumination and doesn't incite just more hostility. Uh, that's the easy thing to push the conflict, to push the dissension, to push the division. Uh, and there's a certain side of this I stand on unequivocally. Uh, I'm about men standing up and loving our women. And uh, I, I think that there is a chasm that has been created that has muddied the water of how that is supposed to look. And I want to talk about that. Uh, before I get into it, I want to remind you, if you are uh, in any way uh, gratified by what you see, you like what you see, you hear, uh, click the like button, click, click the share button, and subscribe. For the people who know the work that we have done in the community for over 30 years from our programs with families, mental health programs, domestic uh, violence programs, uh, Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative, uh, and so much more uh, over the last 30 years, advocacy in school districts for our kids, especially young Black males, and so much more. Look at the description box and there's a way to give to support the work so that we can continue that. And that includes research. Uh, and program development and implementation. So that's that. Now, uh, I heard a very feminist perspective of why men call Russell a simp. And that feminist perspective was given by someone who obviously holds very strong feminist views. And when I say feminist, I don't mean it in the true sense of the word. Feminist in the true sense of the word simply means someone who is an advocate for women's rights and who wants to give women advocacy. Uh, when I talk about feminism in this sense, I'm talking about feminism as a means of manipulation and control to actually take on a dominant, a dominant uh, position or advantageous position uh, with no respect for equality, but more of a room for manipulating and control and division. And you will see it because there won't be harmony. When true feminism, feminism exists, there's still harmony between the female and the male. There's simply a space for the female to operate safely and freely. Uh, when there is a pseudo-feminist uh, ideology, then it is about something that cannot be sustained, and that's domination and total all the to total overall autonomy and separation from men. Uh, well, anyway, this feminist uh, said that the reason that men, black men, hate Wilson, Russell Wilson and call him a simp and all the other things I mentioned earlier is because it's not really Russell, it's Sierra they hate. They hate Sierra because she's a black single mother who uh, is who has kids. So she's a single mom. And that the being a single mom is an automatic devaluation of black women and they are viewed differently and black men don't think they deserve to be loved. They don't deserve to be cared for, at least not at the level that Russell Wilson is loving and caring for Sierra. As a man who took a wife with six kids, I totally disagree that that's a uh, consensus or collective idea. Uh, I will acknowledge that there is a tendency of uninformed, uneducated, and uncultured young black males to devalue black women based on how many children they have. And, and it comes with a challenge. It comes with a responsibility. It comes with a sense of giving to something beyond yourself, which is what marriage is about anyway, regardless to whether a person has children or not. But it's not that the person isn't making a valid point in the sense that there are guys out there who simply can't stand Sierra. The fact that somebody came along and treated Sierra better than what Future did, that bothers them because 
they don't like the fact that somebody that is quote unquote a baby mama gets to have somebody come along and cuff her and I mean truly treat her special I'm not totally refuting that but here's what I'm saying it's deeper than that and here's where it gets complicated yeah there's some guys out there that just simply don't like Sierra don't they think hey man she was she's a nasty dancing blah 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 and this guy's over here losing his mind and all that he's a simp and here's the problem there is a general consensus and this is why I say it's not just how men, black men, feel about women. That needs to be an issue discussed, and I'm not, I, and, and I'm definitely not avoiding it. But I'm talking about this particular topic. See, uh, I'm not married to Sierra, but I am a strong advocate for black women, and I speak up and challenge black men to stand up for black women. But I'm not one to give black women a pass either. So I'm gonna hold everybody accountable. And so at some point, everybody's pissed off with me. And people ask, well, why, do you, why do you chat on them, bro? Because I literally see people come on, subscribe, unsubscribe, come back, subscribe, unsubscribe, because they're moving with their emotions. They only wanna hear what I have to say when it feels good to them. They don't wanna hear what I have to say when it challenges them. So I'm, I'm, I'm not catering to any particular group. So I'm never gonna build a following that serves and satisfies their need for emotional gratification. That's not why I'm here. So then when I sit up and I'm talking about this, cats will come on and call me a simp because I'm, you know, they, they say I'm caping for uh, women and I'm dissing men. No, I, I have, as a man, I have a high standard for men. As a man, you represent me when you go out there. When they, Black men don't have the the latitude or the safe space that uh, other people have to be individuals. We're individuals, but every time a black man does something, he's carrying the weight of every other black man. If you think I'm kidding, just look at how we act when we hear something stupid is happening on the radio and we're waiting to see what the suspect looks like. Everybody's thinking, please don't let it be a black man. I watched my grandparents do that a lot growing up as a kid. They, uh, when the news would come on and they would hear about somebody doing a crime, please don't let it be a black man. Why? Because it's not just them that's going to take the brunt of it. We identify in a way. So because we identify in a way like that, then there is also an identification with every other black man. So I identify with black men. So I want you out there representing black manhood in a way that we all can be proud of it. And disrespecting and mistreating and mishandling and uh, all this stuff to our women is not a good look. Uh, the idea that you feel like any man that treats a woman nice is a simp, that that's some kind of way that we need to manipulate and control our women. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. It's some, some sisters out there straight up foul. It's some sisters out there straight up uh, nasty. It's some sisters out there straight up doing some crazy stuff. But that can't change who you are as a man. You have to learn how to see it and then move on. If they're not worth dealing with, you don't mishandle them. You, you, you either sow them love and try to help them or you move on. And you find somebody that measures up to the standard that you're looking at that carries herself in a way that you think she should carry herself. That uh, meets all the requirements that, that, that are, are requisite for you. And then you invest in that woman. You love that woman, but you don't go through somebody because they don't measure up. You don't treat them nasty. You don't impregnate them and then dog them out. All of those things are actually a reflection of your character. And you have totally uh, made who she is irrelevant because now everybody is really judging you. And when they're judging you, they're judging black men. So when I sit up and I talk about that, that's what I'm talking about. But this whole thing with Russell, the reason brothers have an issue with Russell outside of the fact of those that this person was talking about, that really it's about the fact they can't stand that. They can't stand that that uh, Sierra is being cuffed and cared for uh, by a millionaire and, you know, and the kids he's loving and everything like that. That 
uh, is a part of, but the bigger part is he represents something that they can't see, they can't relate to. He represents something uh, that says there's a standard that you have to live by. He creates cognitive dissonance in men who do not want to stand up. And there are going to be guys who are going to jump on here and have 50 million reasons about why women shouldn't be loved and respected. You're hanging around the wrong women. That's a problem. You're creating, or, or you're not creating an environment conducive for women to truly be who they are. As the leader, as the head, all the things we want to claim we are, there's a responsibility for us to measure up. There's a responsibility for us to sit up and create an environment where a woman can feel safe. You can't sit up and talk about how women are behaving when the second leading cause of death for black women 15 to 44 is intimate partner violence and 90% of those intimate partners are black. You can't cannot sit up there and, and look at that when you look at the single parent uh, household, when you look at domestic violence, when you look at all these different things that are black men mishandling black women, you can't look at that because here's my thing. I haven't always been treated fairly by black women. I, there's some things I've gone through with black women, but my thing is that's not how I'm going to treat black women. That's not how even I'm going to treat the people who handle me. The people who mishandle me, I'm going to keep my distance from them. I'm not going to give them a chance to do it again, but what I'm not going to go out is do is make somebody else pay for it. And then if it's somebody that I'm looking at and say, man, they, they foul. Well, I don't need to deal with them. I don't need to sit up and say, well, I'm going to treat you like trash because you're foul. Or I, I think or I assess that you're foul. I'm simply going to say, them, say man, you foul. I'm going to move on here let you do your foul stuff until something happens in your life that makes you want to correct it. But when it comes to Russell, and I'm not painting this guy in, 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 in this untouchable light. He's human. He has some flaws. From what I understand, he probably wouldn't be a person I would want as a teammate. Uh, but the way he is treating that woman and treating those kids, yeah. Do I think he's petty at times? I do. I think he personally does stuff with little future to get on to get to, to take shots at future. But here's the thing, and this is what brothers don't like. If you don't like another man fathering your kids procreate with somebody you can be with and stay in the situation and father your kids if you can't be in the situation stay connected to your kids because no guy will ever replace you if you're present nobody will ever fill in a spot that you haven't vacated and a lot of cats are upset because they probably see that too you know this nigga done moved in now he all up on my 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 my, my boy and, and he playing like he his daddy and now my boy ain't calling me like stay present stay in the moment be there you know show up at the end of the day the worst case scenario the kid ends up with two pops that ain't a bad thing if you and the mama can't make it two guys that are on their stuff that are loving on this kid, showing him what it's like to be a man. You done moved on. You done got you a new boo. You and your new boo tight. You treating her like a woman's supposed to be treated. Your mom, his mom's new dude is treating her how she's supposed to be treated. And both of y'all are loving on him. That's the best possible outcome once a relationship ends. This whole competition thing, this whole thing like that. So even in the shots that, that Russell may be taking at him, I don't think that's cool. But I think that future, if he wants a relationship with his son, has to move and has to act and has to be a part of it. And if he's really, truly engaged with his son, he's not bucking on what, what Russell is doing with him. It's time for us to grow the hell up. That's not a situation. Even in my last situation with Mary, when I'm with her, I talked to their dad. I invited him over. I tried to facilitate reconnection. And no, I'm not making myself to be off this argument, but I'm telling you, there's a state of mind that you have to have if you're moving into a situation. I'm not there to try to wrangle, because again, I'm not intimidated by a dude. That's another thing. I'm not intimidated by a dude, so I ain't got to push another dude out because I'm worried he going to pull back up. If he pulled back up, that means I misjudged the situation and I wasn't as close to her heart as I, I thought and she wasn't done with him as I thought and that's on me. But I ain't finna push a kid away, I mean a father away from his kid. I'm gonna figure out how we both can work to make sure this kid is good or these kids are good. So this whole idea that, you know, he's a simp, that's just a sad state that we're in 
where a man loving his wife, keyword, wife, is considered simpish behavior. Well, wait, let me take it back. See, he wasn't even supposed to wife her based on the way some of these dudes think. She wasn't wifey material. And I think that is a part of what bothers them. Somebody they don't think is wifey material is living a life as the wife of a well-known, extremely wealthy black man and living it up. And they don't think she deserves it. Well, here's the thing. You don't get to determine who loves somebody or who is deserving of somebody's love. The only love that you get to determine who deserves is yours. And you're obviously not giving it to her. So you don't have to anything to worry about. That's that man's heart. That's that man's money. That's that man's choice. I'd rather see that than to see in the paper somebody beating on, some brother beating on a woman, another player that got caught up in a domestic violence case, another player being investigated for homicide on, on, on his mate and all this here stuff. I'd rather see that. I'd rather see somebody marrying somebody, loving somebody, treating somebody with respect. But that's simpish behavior to a lot of people. It's sad. But hey, that's my take on it. Uh, I got nothing respect for any man that'll take a woman, love her, and love her kids. That's the way I was taught it's supposed to be done, and I got mad love for that. Uh, I was reared by my great-grandparents, and my great-grandmother wasn't my biological grandmother, and she loved me. She took care of me. She raised me. She never, I, you know, you would never know that she wasn't. My biological great-grandmother died giving birth to my grandmother. So all the kids that came after that, including the second man my grandmother my great grandmother was my grandfather's third wife and so he had all his kids before he met her they didn't have kids together she raised all his kids turned around raised his granddaughter my mom turned around raised her oldest child me and did an unbelievable job in loving me and preparing me in the best way I could be prepared on the nurturing side. My grandfather did an unbelievable job teaching me what it means to be a man. But she always showed me more than she told me. You love that man or you love that woman, you love those kids. And she showed it to me. And they, when my grandfather died, she cared for him for five years. And the flip side of that is I knew the story because somebody had told me the story. My, my grandmother told me, but somebody else told me the story. When they first got married, she had a nervous breakdown. And when she had the nervous breakdown, she was completely out of it for five years. My grandfather worked three jobs and took care of her, had somebody watching her while he was working those three jobs. He took care of her until she came out of it and she got back to what she could do for herself. And she went back to work and everything else. And at the end, she for five years, she took care of him. And see, that's what happens when you invest. That's what happens when you put your heart into something. That's what happens when you think beyond yourself, when it's not just about you, when it's about something bigger. And so that's the way I love. And so when I see somebody loving somebody, that's big to me. It's so much bigger than trying to win. Who got the upper hand? Who got the advantage? I can't give more than I'm getting. And that's where we're at right now. It's a sad state of affairs. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, as I said before, if you believe in the work we're doing, we really need the help. Look in the description box and see how you can give. On that note, I'm out. You guys have an unbelievable day.